Hey, what's up guys? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'll be showing you how to rebuild the shocks and replace the seals on a Polaris XP1000 with Walker Evans shocks. Okay, so today I'll be showing you how to replace the shock seals, O-rings, and shock oil on a 2014 Polaris Razor XP1000 with Walker Evans shocks. Now, if you're putting down a ton of miles and usage on your machine, your shock oil is going to wear out and it will need to be replaced along with all the associated components. Now, Polaris recommends that you need to change out your shock oil at about every 1500 miles, depending upon usage. Now, if your machine is subjected to a ton of abuse and a lot of miles, you may want to change out that shock oil a little earlier, say at about around a thousand miles of use. Now, if you're looking at your shocks, you see that it's starting to leak or you've just put a ton of hours and miles on your machine, then it's time to rebuild them and freshen up your shocks. Now, instead of buying new replacement shocks, you can rebuild them and I can show you how. So let's get started. To complete this service, we'll be using the Polaris Walker Evans Seal Kit. It comes complete with everything that you need and you can find it on our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com. Okay, so we've just removed our shock from the machine. We've got it up here on the bench. The first thing we want to do is take and place it into our vise with soft jaws. Okay, so once you have your shock mounted in the vise, the first thing we need to do is take a measurement of the spring's preload. So we'll take and place our tape at the top of the spring's preload adjuster, and we'll measure to the top of where the threads end on the shock body. So here it looks like we're sitting at about one and seven eighths of an inch. So we'll write down that measurement. First, we need to clean off our threads. To do that, we'll be using some compressed air, make sure to have some safety glasses and some contact cleaner, and then give them a little bit of lube. Then we take our spanner wrench here that should come stock with your machine, and we'll remove the preload. Okay, so we've got the nut backed off as far as it will go, and we still don't have enough room to pull off of our, our springs retainer. Now, on this particular shock, we've done a spring swap kit. So this tender spring is actually off of a four-seater, so it makes this more difficult to remove. For this, we're going to be using the spring compressors. This will allow us to compress the spring so we can achieve enough distance to remove the spring's retainer. Now, if your machine at home doesn't have a spring swap kit on it, you should have enough clearance and ability to, to pull back on the springs like so, slide your bump stop up out of the way, and pull the retainer free. All right, so now that we've got our shock cleaned up pretty good, we're gonna reposition it in our vise. Now, the first thing we need to do is relieve the pressure that's inside of the reservoir here. So there's about 125 PSI built up in here. So make sure to have your safety glasses on and it may dispel some fluid too. And then just to be certain, we'll take our Schrader valve remover tool, we'll pull out the Schrader valve. And to be certain that all the pressure has been removed, you can press on the, the seal head here of the reservoir just to make sure all of that pressure is gone. So now we can take our snap ring pliers, we'll place them into the reservoir here at the base of it. Get these pulled out of here. And then we can pull out the seal. So now that we've got this apart, we can remove the seal head on the shock's body. All right, so once you've got that unthreaded, pull this up. You may want to take a rag and wrap it around the shock body. It will lose some oil. Now we can pull this out of our vise here, empty it into the drain pan. Inside of our reservoir here, we have what's called the IFP. It's an internal floating piston. We'll need to pull this out, and to do that, we'll need this IFP tool. Now this tool is absolutely necessary in order to do this job, and you can find it on our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com. We thread on the tool and slowly work out the IFP. So now I'm going to take the shock body, I'm going to let it hang right side up just so that all of the oil can drain. Let it drain for about 20 minutes. So this is our seal head itself right here. And we've got our spacer and then our valving. So we need to remove all this assembly so that we can get to the seals that are inside of our shock seal head. To do that, we're going to need an 11 32nd socket, excuse me, 11 16ths. We'll need to crack this free. So we'll take our pick tool, we'll set it over our shim stack. So I like to keep all the shims located onto the pick here like this. Then that way it helps you keep track. Just don't forget the orientation. The next part is getting the spacer removed. It's really difficult to pull off. You may need to take a hammer and just kind of lightly tap on each side evenly. There it comes, just like that. 
And now we can take off our seal head. Okay, on the inside of here, we've got a wiper, an oil seal, and an O-ring. All three of those will need to be replaced. So we'll take our pick tool and work the seal out. That's our wiper. Next is our seal. And lastly, inside of there, we have an O-ring. Okay, so now that we've got those pulled out, we'll get this cleaned up and ready for new seals. Before we do that, the last O-ring that we'll be pulling off here is the seal head O-ring itself. Okay, so now that we've got our shocks seal head nice and clean, we're ready for some new seals. Before we get our new seals installed, we should probably crack open our bottle of shock fluid here and lube up our O-ring. We'll get this installed on our seal head. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of shock oil here on our fingers. We're gonna lube up our O-ring, oil seal, and wiper seal. Then we'll start with the O-ring. Once you've got the O-ring installed, we can then move forward with the oil seal. Now, between the oil seal and the wiper, there is a difference. The wiper is a lot more stiffer than the oil seal. The oil seal is gonna be a lot softer. Now, to orient the seal, here's our seal head, right? This is the bottom side of it. We wanna make sure that the lip of the seal is facing downwards towards the ground. So you can tell that by the back side of the seal here is gonna have a recessed end on it, and the front side that'll be facing the ground is gonna have that lip that protrudes from its body. So, so we'll get our oil seal installed, and lastly, we'll install the wiper. Now the wiper may be a little bit difficult, so just work at it. Now once you get the seals inside of there, take your finger, run it along the inside diameter of the seals to make sure that there's no bulging and that they've been seated properly. Now we are ready to install the seal head. Before we do that, you're definitely gonna need one of these. This is our, our seal bullet. This will be placed over the shock shaft so that we can slide our seal head on there without compromising the seals. So we'll take and place this over the threads. Our shocks, bodies, seals are, excuse me, seal heads, seals are nice and lubed. Get it started. And then we're just gonna real, real quickly get it set like that. We can pull the seal bullet off, start with reassembling our spacer. Again, the recessed side facing down, and then we can take our shim stack and work it into place. Now we're gonna to torque this nut to 29 foot-pounds. Now we need to take and replace the O-rings on our IFP and our reservoir's seal. Okay, now they've got our O-rings replaced. We can pull our shock shaft out of the vise, take our shock body, get it mounted, and we can finish with the assembly. Okay, now before we add fluid, we need to take our rebound, or excuse me, our compression adjuster here, and we need to back it out so it's full soft. Count the clicks and write them down on a piece of paper. We'll take our shock fluid here. We're gonna fill up our reservoir. Now we'll equalize from either side. So we'll add a little bit to each side. And we only want the fluid to be sitting about halfway here, maybe just a little more than half. Okay, so once we get our oil height to about there and it's equalized, it's gonna stay in that position. We can take our IFP We'll take our 3 30 seconds Allen wrench and we'll pull out the bleed screw. Now there is an O-ring that comes along with it, so you make, make sure to retrieve that. Now another wear item on the IFP is this wear band right here. Give it a good inspection, make sure it doesn't have any pitting, any aluminum embedded inside of it, or just significant wear that you can see. If it does, make sure to get this replaced. Then we'll take our IFP, set it into our shock body here, excuse me, shock reservoir, and we will lightly set it. Now, as we begin to press this in here, you may experience some fluid shooting up through the center of it. So try to set it nice and slowly. Okay, now you wanna have the IFP set so it's just below the fluid. So you can see some fluid on top. Now we're gonna take our IFP screw, we're gonna set it. Once that's set into place, we'll take our IFP tool, thread it onto the IFP. So once we have our tool secured to the IFP, we need to stroke this to push out any air bubbles that might be sitting in this area of the shock. So we're gonna stroke it, send it all the way down to the bottom of the reservoir as far as it will go. You'll hear the air bubbles come out of the shock body, and then we'll raise it up about an inch or so, then bottom it out again. All right, so we'll pull the IFP up till it's about an inch from the edge of our reservoir here. Now as you're pulling this up, make sure to keep an eye on your shock body side. You don't want it to suck any air back through to this other, other side here. Now we'll take our shock oil, 
We're gonna fill up the reservoir till we're about, let's say, to the bottom of the threads here that are inside of the shock's body. Maybe a little higher than that. Okay, so once we have enough oil set into our shock body, we're gonna take the shock shaft here. We'll place it into the shock body. Now again, inspect your valving here. Check your wear band. Make sure it doesn't have any excess wear, any aluminum embedded into it, and so forth. Be real gentle when setting this in there. You are gonna lose some fluid. It will overflow. So once we have the shock shaft set in here to about a half inch from the top, we need to stroke it a couple of times. So we'll set this in about an inch and then pull it back up. Always remember to maintain about a quarter of an inch of distance between this, the valving and the shock fluid. So we'll do this just nice and slow, just a few times. Try to purge out any air bubbles. And for this last part, we're gonna take our mallet. We're gonna strike the eyelet here. We'll just do maybe one or two quick swift blows, nothing real hard, just enough to shock that valve to purge out any air bubbles that may be inside. Now, if we do this too hard, we run the risk of blowing out our IFP valve because there's nothing in there holding it in place. So be real careful when doing this. Now we'll bring our valving up till it's about a quarter inch from the top. We're gonna bring the seal head down. Now, once the threads meet the body, bring the shock shaft itself up to greet the seal's head. And you're gonna lose some oil. The whole point of this part is to not suck in any air. Now, Players doesn't give us a torque spec for the seal head here. So we're just gonna make sure it's nice, tight, and snug. Now this last part is we're gonna be setting our IFP valve to a depth of 2.875 inches. So you'll need a depth gauge. Here we have some calipers. I have them preset to our depth. Now we'll remove the IFP bleed screw. And before you remove the screw completely, make sure that you have some oil that's sitting above it, just so that way it doesn't suck in any air. Okay, remember the O-ring that comes with the bleed screw? All right, now we're gonna take and set this to a depth of 2.875. All right, looks like we've got quite a ways to go. Now, the measurement that this part of the tool is touching is just gonna be the top outside edge of the IFP. So once you've reached that depth, we need to reinstall the IFP bleed screw. Now, it's pretty difficult with your Allen wrench to get this to stick on there. It may drop. So to ensure that we don't lose this inside of there and have to fish it out later, I'm gonna take just a small dab of grease. I'm gonna set it over the IFP's bleed screws tool hole there, the Allen hole. And then I've went ahead and rigged up this little guy. I'm sure there's something better out there, but this is what I've got to use. So I've got a drill a bit adapter and the 3 30 seconds bit. I've got this assembly put together. I'm gonna to take and place my tool into where I've blobbed the grease, make sure it's nice and sealed. Now I definitely won't lose my IFP bleed screw. So I'm gonna take and set this inside. So once we are to that point, we can take our shock body out of the vise, we'll pour out the excess oil, and then the next step will be setting the reservoir's cap. Okay, so we've got our shock body back up into our vise. We've got our reservoir cap here, newly replaced O-ring, it's nice and lubed up. We'll go ahead and set this guy. And we can take our snap ring pliers on our snap ring. So now we're to this point. We can take our Schrader valve and our Schrader valve tool and set it. At this point, we're gonna take it over to our nitrogen tank. We'll fill it with 125 PSI, and then we'll bring it back over here and get the springs installed. Now at this point, I'm gonna take and set this back to our original settings. Okay, so now that we've got our shock placed back into our vise with soft jaws, we can remount our springs. So we're gonna start with our top spring or tender spring, and then our spring divider, and lastly, the bottom spring. Slide on our spring retainer, lower the spring, set our bump stop, and we're gonna bring our spring spacer, or excuse me, spring preload adjuster all the way to where we need it to sit. So we measured one and seven eighths of an inch, so it looks like we're sitting about one and three eighths, so we'll just have a little bit of work to do. All right, now these spring dividers here, they've got arrows on both sides of them. These don't just indicate the direction that the divider should be facing, the long side, but it also indicates where the spring coil ends should line up. So on our top spring, the coil end will end here, and then for our bottom, 
we'll have it end where the coil ends on the bottom spring. Okay, we've got those set. Now, for the base here, our spring retainer needs to face 180 degrees from where our spring coil ends, and it looks like we're actually already there. So, as far as indexing everything, get every, getting it all into the right uh, spot, we're looking pretty good. So now we can take, remove our spring compressors. All right, got our spring compressors off. We were not far enough on our adjustment yet, so we can either rotate our spring assembly. Seems to be a lot easier than using the spanner wrench. Cool, looks like we're right at one and seven eighths inches. So that's how we rebuild the front shock and replace the seals. So now we can move on to the rear. Make sure to check out part two of this series where we show you how to rebuild the rear shock.